racer, he's a demon on wheel. He's a demon and he's gonna be chasing after someone. Go speed racer, go speed racer, go speed racer, go! Speed Racer began in uh, Japan in 1965. It was created by Tatsuo Yoshida, who ran a studio called Tatsunoko Production Company with two of his brothers. Tatsuo Yoshida created a manga series, which is Japanese comics, entitled Mak Go 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 in 1965, about a young race car driver with the fastest and coolest car in the universe, the Mach 5. The characters were just sort of secondary to uh, the Mach 5 or Mach Go, as they called it in Japan. And then a, a year later, they turned it into a cartoon series. Mach Go! 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 The name of the series was Mach Go Go Go, which was sort of a triple play on words. Go being the number five, and of course, Go being, you know, Go. And the first name of Speed Racer's character in Japan was Go Mifune, is his full name. When the series came out, it only played one season, 52 episodes, because that's the way the Japanese program their animated series. They produce them, they play them, and they, they run another one. Translux Productions picked up the um, adaptation rights and somehow found Peter Fernandez. Some editors called me and I said, we have this series coming in, uh, and we'd wonder if you'd be interested in it. But the only directions being Americanize it. I could do anything, name the characters, write the dialogue, whatever I wanted, but I had to follow the plot, of course. Peter Fernandez was the writer, producer, director, voice of Speed Racer, voice of Racer X, and he, along with three other people, uh, adapted Mach Go 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 into English. Uh, and turned it into Speed Racer. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheel. The focus of the series transferred from the Mach 5 to the characters. Instead of calling the series Mach 5, he called it Speed Racer because he wanted to build the adaptation around the, the main character. There were only four of us in the cast. Three guys and one gal. I didn't hold the casting auditions. I just knew who I wanted. Jack Curtis, who was Pops, and all the announcer voices, and Inspector Detector. How are you, Inspector? Ha <laughs> ha glad to see you. I'd have to save the recording of Pops each episode till the end of the day, because it would destroy Jack's throat. Here we go again, Pops pouring another gasket. Speed, I don't want you in that race. Under no circumstances are you to enter. Understand? I wonder where he could be. It's not like Speed to disappear like this. Green Orr did all the female voices. What kind of story is that? I never met you before. Huh? Jack Grimes played Sparky and Chim Chim and a lot of the villains I'd known him since we were kids. I gave myself the best parts, Speed and Racer X, but I was right for them. You, what are you doing here, Speed? Practicing. You must not be in the race. I will be, and I can beat you. I'll prove it. Hey, Trixie, will you shut up and let me drive? Oh. We had to do not only our regular parts in each episode, but all the villains. Well, where's the steering wheel, and where's the speedometer? Speed Racer sent a flying robot camera to spy on the mammoth car. I had wonderful villains in the Speed Racer series, and I had a wonderful time naming them. Mr. Cumulus, everything has gone well as planned. Good work, Nightcall. Cruncher Block. I used to come up with outrageous names, but that was fun doing it. I'll bet Speed's following the monster car to find out more about it. Well, I hope he's not, because it's too dangerous. The army failed miserably, so who knows what it might do to him? <laughs> you see Pops going, Oh, no, no, Speed, no, 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 Dr. Nightcall is wanted by the police for the robbery at the Science Institute. Just who are you anyway, and what are you doing with a car that looks like the Mach 5? The fast talking sort of became uh, one of the uh, popular aspects of the show. <laughs> the, the original Speed Racer was pretty violent. Uh, for a kid's cartoon. There were scenes in the Japanese episodes that were edited out due to the content. There were some horrendous car crashes. You'd see arms and legs flying. 
There was probably two to three minutes of every episode that had to be edited. And I always tried to take the violence away from that by someone saying, well, he's in serious condition in the hospital, but the doctors say he'll pull through. Thanks for saving our lives, Masked Racer. I like the Mach 5. It was sort of like the Batmobile or those James Bond cars. Things popped out, saws, it jumped. There was a bird that came out of the hood, a robot bird. That was pretty cool. Actually, it was more than pretty cool. It was, like, incredibly cool, to be honest with you. The car's equipped with everything anybody can imagine. Ghost Eraser, Ghost Eraser, go! The theme song was a very big magnet for the popularity of the show. People gravitated toward that theme song. People sing the theme song today who haven't seen the show for 40 years. I think I actually remember all the lyrics from the Speed Racer theme song. The translated Japanese lyrics had nothing to do with the lyrics from the classic Speed Racer theme song that were developed by Peter Fernandez. I tried to write words that would fit, and then a guy named Billy Muir, who was an arranger, he arranged the American version. It became the internationally recognized song it is now. Who had an idea? The Speed Racer song is as important as the series and as important as a part of our culture. Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! Go Speed Racer! When it came over to the United States, it went through a completely different television distribution pattern and was on you know, for almost 20 years in syndication throughout the U.S. Primarily, they played it after school, got great ratings, so they kept playing it and playing it and playing it. It was really different looking, and people hadn't seen that before, and it was more serious sort of stuff rather than the slapstick Warner Brothers or Tom and Jerry. It was a story about family and real people. You cared about these people, and I think that's been one of the things that has made this series last in people's minds. The human elements, combined with the coolest vehicles at the time, attracted boys and girls, because there was a lot of little girls that were watching the series, too. A lot of girls, grown-up girls, tell me that Speed Racer was their first crush. The stories happened all over the world. Not only did they race, but they solved problems for the police along the way. The children gravitated to not only the action, but the, the story also. Speed Racer Enterprises came into the picture you know, roughly around 91, 90, 1992, and luckily, the folks at MTV were big Speed Racer fans. We had the classic Speed Racer on MTV as Beavis and Butthead's lead-in. We're resting it right now, and it'll go back on the air in the next couple years, somewhere. Oh. There was a merchandising program in, in Japan, and there are a few items still floating out there, but in the United States, there wasn't, there wasn't anything until Speed Racer Enterprises came into the picture. We've had anywhere from 25 to 30 companies a year in different categories, from t-shirts to vehicles to collectible toys to comic books, many different product categories over the years. We get calls from various industries wanting to use Speed Racer as you know, their spokesperson or, or on their product. In 94, there was a big national Volkswagen commercial, totally reanimated. Speed, if you don't win, we could lose everything. Here, Speed. Huh? The Volkswagen GTI. It really is not only a seminal work for animators and has such an incredible influence on animators, but you see that it also has such an influence on people that are creating live action movies and television shows. It's a part of world popular culture. You see it referenced in, in advertising. You see it referenced in product design. Here they come to the finish. Speed Racer is the winner with a Masked Racer coming in second. Tatsuo Yoshida. His brainchild started off as a Japanese comic book, turned into a, a Japanese animated series, and then it came over here in 1967, and the rest is history. Ahead lies more adventure in the next thrilling episode of Speed Racer.